Anyways, back to genuine disasters. Yeah. So this black hole, yeah. there's a stellar black hole. Yeah. Let's hear about your real field of expertise, which I actually love is the primordial black holes. It's okay. crazy. I don't know, can you explain before we all <laughs> die in the heat? Uh, yeah, okay, so I'll be quick because it is, it is getting really hot. Um, so primordial black holes, uh, so okay, so a black hole is, is really defined as a thing that's so dense that all of its matter is within the event horizon distance. So the event horizon has a, has a definition, there's an equation that defines what the event horizon is in relation to a particular mass. And if you can get enough matter within that, um, within that radius, um, that the mass within is greater than the mass um, of a black hole, with that event horizon, um, then it is black hole. Um, and so, so the usual way to do that is to have a massive star that collapses on itself. Um, but uh, in the 70s, um, Stephen Hawking and others uh, hypothesized that you could have primordial black holes, which are black holes that form without having a star happen at all. But what happens is that in the early universe, the early universe is very dense. Um, it has little fluctuations of higher densities in different places, mm -hmm. and uh, every once in a while you can get a situation where you have a fluctuation where the density is high enough that it, that little bit of density, a little bit of matter, just collapses immediately into its own black hole. Um, okay. And so you can have little black holes forming in the early universe, and little as in, like, less than the mass of the Earth. Um, okay. Right. So, so uh, how big would that be then? Well, so the ones that people talk about most of the time with primordial black holes are the ones that are sort of disappearing today. I'll talk about how that happens. Um, but those are about 10 to the 15 grams, which is like the mass of a mountain. Yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, so, so these little black holes would evaporate. I don't know if you've heard of Hawking evaporation, um, but it's, 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 okay, yeah. yeah. So Hawking evaporation is this, this process by which the tiny black holes can sort of can lose their mass. So they, they they put out radiation. I mean, nothing can leave the black hole, but there's this quantum mechanical process by which particles are sort of created and some fall in and some come out. And, and the ones that come out to carry away the mass of the black hole and then the black hole evaporates. Um, and that, uh, that process goes faster and hotter when the black hole is smaller. Mm -hmm. So for these little black holes, you can get kind of sort of little beacons of radiation um, as these black holes are evaporating. And so a lot of work has gone into looking for signatures of these little black holes evaporating in the early universe. And this is why we get Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, so yeah. you tell the story, because I don't know the story. Uh, yeah, so John Solomon, uh, absolute guru, radio guru. Back in the 70s, Hawking said about these primordial black holes and they would be going bang, mm -hmm. essentially, around near the Earth at this time. And he built a specific radio technology to try and search for these explosions. And he couldn't find any. Um, but the nice thing is that the technique he used to, to clean up the signal, essentially as, this, as the signal would travel through space, it would get smeared up by all the, the garbage in space. And it's the technique in, in stellar medium. Yeah. And this would, um, and his technique was to basically take up the smeared signal clean up, compress it, get it back to the perfect initial signal. And that's the same technique that's used in Wi-Fi. That's really cool. See, see this stuff that has practical yeah. applications? You would never guess that studying microscopic black holes formed in the early universe would have any... any uh, it's the ultimate blue sky on. research. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's like, you know, you'd think that you'd have to be someone really interested in microscopic black holes in the early universe to ever care that that happened. But apparently, um, you know, I mean, the, what we're doing right now um, is, is based on that research, so yeah, it's very cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so those are primordial black holes. Um, people look for those. Uh, there are lots of different theories on how you can make primordial black holes. Uh, most of them are really, really speculative, like crazy stuff has to happen. Do you have one? No, I don't have one. My favorite one is, is has to do with cosmic strings. Uh, um, yeah. Which are which are these sort of strings of ultra high density that that might be left over from uh, from weird processes in the early universe. And if you if you have a loop of this cosmic string, um, yes. I mean you can think of a cosmic string kind of like a linear black hole. It's like a line of high density stuff. So if you have a, one of those in, in a loop, um, that loop can collapse. And if you if you can get that loop to 
to uh, collapse into a small enough sort of bundle that it could be within its own event horizon and make a black hole. Okay. It's, I mean, it's really speculative because we, we don't even have any idea if, if cosmic strings exist. Um, but if they did, and if they did this thing, then you can make little black holes in the universe, yeah. which would be kind of cool. Um, so this is uh, these sort of topological defects. There's, my favorite is the domain walls. Mm. Totally off topic, but that's my uh, old PhD supervisor. It's his favorite theory of domain walls. Which we'll, we'll talk maybe about yeah, topological defects another time. Yeah, Because yeah. they should happen. It's, it's, you see ice freezing, cracks occurring, that's a topological defect. Or we're just talking about it in space time. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of so it's nothing like the ice, but it's a nice analogy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we got um, we have a promo about holes, stellar black holes. Um, why don't we all just fall into black hole? Why isn't the universe just getting gobbled up by black holes? Yeah. 